In one of my previous videos, I demonstrated how to use Microsoft Publisher to create a simple poster. Publisher is a great piece of software, but many people don't have it. And also, if you're a Mac user, such as what I'm using here, Publisher isn't available on the Mac. So what I'm going to do instead in this video is demonstrate how you can use a different piece of software, Microsoft PowerPoint in this case, in order to do the same thing. PowerPoint, once again, is a great piece of software and it's very versatile, very flexible, and so it's brilliant for creating posters and that kind of thing. I'm going to start by creating a blank presentation. So I've just clicked present. And first of all, I want to get rid of just the default things I've got on the slide. Now, one little trick, um, because I'm only going to create a single page, I'm not really bothered about this um, the, the panel on the side showing me each of my different pages because I've only got one. So by dragging it to the left, I can actually get rid of it, which gives me a little bit more real estate on my screen. Now, this at the moment is, is a slide designed for showing through a projector or on a screen. So I'm now going to just alter the page setup, which I do by going to File, Page Setup, and I'm going to change it from being a widescreen slide to being an A3 piece of paper, which will be ideal for printing it off later on. And I'm going to click OK. At this point where it says, do you want to scale the slide? It doesn't really matter because I've not actually got anything on my slide at the moment. So I'm just going to click on that. And after a moment, it should reformat the slide like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by giving my slide a backdrop. Um, you could just do a simple backdrop just by changing a solid fill and changing the colour of the solid fill so that it's black. But actually, I, I'm going to add a picture instead. And I've already saved some pictures into uh, a little uh, folder that I've got on my desktop. Um, so I've got the ones I want to use here. First of all, just a word of advice. When you use a backdrop like this one here, try not to use something that's too busy. This is a lovely, lovely image. But unfortunately, if I start putting bits and pieces on top of it, it's going to make things very difficult to see and very difficult to read. And so for that reason, I've actually chosen a much simpler backdrop to use for this poster. Once again, I've got a few stars there, but not too many. It's going to make it easier to see things. Another little trick, when I insert a picture, on the right hand side, I've got the format panel for the picture and if I go click on this tab here and go to picture corrections I can start to just adjust the brightness a little bit so I'm going to turn my brightness down just to make that backdrop a little bit dimmer that's possibly a bit too dim but I think somewhere around around there should do it and it just means that the other pictures that I put on this poster are going to stand out much much more um, it does take a bit of fiddling around with getting the brightness and contrast right for these things so it does take experimentation and you've got to be a little bit patient and play around with it um, in actual fact I would recommend that if you're putting a poster together try assembling the poster first and actually leave your backdrop to last because once you've got all of the other elements in place then you can decide on what an appropriate backdrop is that still allows you to see everything that's in the foreground now when designing a poster, it helps if you plan the poster out to begin with. So I've already um, had a go at just drawing a little design as to how I want my poster to actually look, um, where I want the elements to go. And I've drawn that out and I'm going to refer to it. This is going to be a poster on the life cycle of stars. Um, and I'm now going to just try and put that in, 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 into place on PowerPoint. One thing to remember, something that's very easy to get wrong, is that this picture is going to be A3 in size. That's actually pretty large. And doing this on a computer screen really doesn't do it any justice as to how large everything is going to be. And people do have a tendency when making posters to often make the components too big because they don't appreciate how big the final poster will be. So it's something to bear in mind when, when putting this together. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pictures, which, as I said earlier, I've already saved, and I'm going to place them actually in about the right position on the poster. So this is my nebula that I'm going to start with. I'm going to place that right over there on the left-hand side. Now, although that doesn't look very big, it, it is actually too big for what, what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm going to start by reducing the size of the nebula straight away. Um, I need to have my proto star. I've got my proto star on here somewhere as well, so I'm going to drag that in. Um, let's reduce the size of that as well. That should do. 
I then want my main sequence stars. This is an average size star. You'll notice that this average size star is very big, that picture. So I'm going to reduce it significantly in size. Um, I'm going to put a blue giant, a much bigger star on my poster. Um, it's very difficult to get things to scale on a poster like this because, because stars vary enormously in size. So my, my images aren't going to be to scale, but I'm going to make this slightly bigger than, than my average size star, just to give the, the idea that we are looking at a bigger star. But on, on this scale, to be honest, this nebula would be huge. It would be much, much bigger than the poster as a whole, and the protostar would actually be tiny. Um, let's go on to the next bit. So I've put my main sequence stars on there. The next bit I want is a red giant. Now, I want to create the illusion of size with the red giant, but unfortunately, I can't have something that big on the poster. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll, I'll reduce this in size a little bit, and I'm going to actually do a bit of a crop. So I'm only going to show part of this, a corner of it, like that. I'll also just crop off this side a little bit. And then, yeah, I, I'm happy with that. That shows part of my red giant. And then I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm just going to copy and paste that actually and create a copy of it. And then what I will do, where do I want to go? Format picture. I'm going to crop this again. So I'm going to alter the way I've cropped it. I'm going to show rather than the bottom half, I'm going to show the top half. I'm going to just uh, maybe just increase the size of the image slightly actually. So let me uncrop and make that a little bit bigger to give the impression that we're dealing with something much, much bigger in this particular case. So in this case, we're looking at a red supergiant star. Um, I want to get my white dwarf in there at the top. So let me position my white dwarf somewhere up there. Here we go. So there's my white dwarf, which is the last thing I've got in my sequence for, um, for an average size star. Um, with the blue blue giant, I, I need a couple more sequences in there, so I'm going to have to move things slightly. I'll just reduce that back down again. I'm just going to reduce the size of things ever so slightly so that I can fit a bit more in. So I'm going to move everything over to the left slightly, like this. Let's get that over there. And hopefully that's just giving me a bit more space to insert, first of all, my supernova. Let's see, once again, that needs reducing significantly in size. So, so supernovas are, are, are big. I mean, I mean they're, they're going to be, they, they outshine whole galaxies. So once again, I can't really capture properly on this poster just what the scale of these things are. Um, and then finally, I want to put on my neutron star. I will point out with my, there's my neutron star with my um, white dwarf, in, in, in case you haven't realised, with my white dwarf star that I've got here, the white dwarf is actually a little dot at the centre. This bit surrounding it is what's known as a planetary nurse, nursery. Sorry, a pla planetary nebula, let me get the name right. Um, this is my black hole that I'm going to use. Once again, I'm going to reduce that right down in size, like so. Black black holes, contrary to a lot of, what a lot of people think, are actually usually very, very small in size. Now, next stage I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of editing on, on these images just to make them stand out a bit more. With, with, with the nebula at the moment, it really doesn't stand out very well. So I'm going to make it brighter. So I'm going to turn the brightness up to maybe, yeah, that, that's a little bit better. And then increase the contrast. Increasing the contrast will just help to make the background around the um yeah, around the nebula, a little bit darker. And I've increased it a bit too high there because we've lost some of the features. So I'm going to do it like that. So that's looking quite good. I want to make the protostar a little bit brighter as well because it just blends into the background a little bit much. Let's just slightly increase the contrast. Um, likewise, the neutron star, I want that to be a bit brighter and increase the contrast once again just to make the surroundings a bit darker. And likewise with my black hole, let's increase the uh, brightness of the black hole so it stands out and increase the contrast. Ooh, I don't think I want to increase it too much actually. The contrast is probably about right. So I can leave that. This one, shall I try increasing contrast a little bit? Yep, slight increase on the contrast. And that, I think I'm fairly happy with how things look. Now, next little step, I'm gonna give my poster a title across the top. I'm gonna to use uh, Word Art to do that. So I'm gonna click on Word Art and I quite like 
that word out. So I'm going to call this life cycle of stars. And life cycle of stars can go up there at the top of that image. And now I'm going to start labeling the individual bits. So I want to insert some text boxes. Now, if I put a text box here, um, one thing you'll notice when I start typing is that nothing appears to, to happen there. And the, the reason for that is, is, is just because all of the text by default is in black. So I'm going to change the text color to, to white. I also need to just make a little spelling correction there. So that's my Stella Nursery. Let's, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy and paste that because then hopefully it makes, I can position it a bit easier. So Proto Star. I'm also going to center it. Let's center the text. So that's my protostar. Copy once again. Let's just, yep, just copy that rather than the text. Paste. And this is going to be an average star. This one down here is my large star, which is a blue giant. At the top, I'm just going to say that these two things are actually main sequence stars. Now I'm going to bold that and make it slightly bigger than the surrounding text so we know where it's referring to. So those are my main sequence stars. I'm going to insert my red giant, label for red giant. And then at the bottom, we want red supergiant. Yep. And then I've got my white dwarf over here. I might just put the label at the top because that's star underneath. Uh, I need to learn to spell dwarf. Um, here we have our supernova. So let's shove the label for that in place supernova and then the last two elements which I will shove in we've got here is our neutron star and then finally we have our black hole last little thing that my poster needs is I'm going to just insert some arrows to show a bit of a flow to it so you've got lots of different arrow stars but the one I quite like is to use this one here so I'll just draw an arrow um, I'm going to format it by giving it a nice sort of fill. Um, How is that? Yeah, I quite like that with the blue surround. So let me put that in place there. Let me copy it and let me add some. Let's rotate that slightly, move it up so it's out of the way of the text. So I need a number of copies here. So that one needs to go down there. I'm going to line it up just to make it a bit more flush with that top arrow. Let's paste two more. So I need this one to be there, this one to be here. I know it's overlapping the image a little bit, but can't be helped. That one's going to go there. This one is going to go here. And then the final two. I probably need as well, to be honest, a little label explaining the difference between these, that uh, a neutron star is your big large star but a black hole comes from a very large star so there we go that's my finished poster